AviationPros.com is the portal website for AMT, airport business, and ground support worldwide magazines. Visit daily for breaking news, industry blogs, and insightful articles from our magazine's editorial team. And don't forget to sign up for our publication's daily e-newsletters. It's all at AviationPros.com. Hello and welcome to the Aviation Pros Podcast. I'm Christina Marsh, Editor of Airport Business, and today we're speaking with Plaza Premium Group Senior Vice President of Commercial Development and Operations, Pascal Boulanger, about how the U.S. airport lounge market is evolving and what PPG is doing to keep up with the demands. Well, first things first, Pascal, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you. So it has been five years since Plaza Premium Group decided to enter the U.S. airport lounge market. How has the vision evolved since the initial planning? You know, it has quite a bit. Uh, Plaza Premium has been in, in business for 25 years this year, actually. And, uh, you know, our, our mission really is to make travel better. And so, uh, you know, the United States is is an important market for us. Um, you know, we provide lounges, as I said, for the last 25 years, uh, started in Asia and have been expanding around the world, obviously, uh, more, more recently to the U.S. And, um, you know, we offer basically, you know, high-end quality lounges uh, for our users where they can have, you know, whether it's workstation for business travelers or even family areas for families that travel. Food and beverage, of course, is a big component of, of using a lounge. So that is that is really uh, at the core is to make the traveler um, journey more pleasant as they go through the airports and use our facilities. And so, um, you know, like I said, the U.S. is an important market for Plaza Premium. And uh, we're slowly expanding our footprint in, in, in the country. Can you tell us about any unique opportunities in the U.S. market? Well, I think the, the U.S. is such a, a an extensive, mature uh, market. Um, you know, we're in nearly 40 countries around the world. But when I think of the United States, I think of, a, a, you know, a lot of travelers, busy airports uh, around the country uh, with uh, with different demographics of travelers uh, that come through uh, the airports. And uh, many of them now are seeking those, I'll say, amenities and experiences the likes of lounges as an example and whether people are traveling for leisure business uh, alone families or what have you uh, that is something that we're seeing uh, quite a bit of and and i'll give you an example uh, when dealing for instance with i'll say low cost or ultra low cost carriers that offer i'll say um, a good offering in terms of of, of air services um, but but limited in terms of onboard um, uh, services uh, and so on and so forth. People really enjoy, I think, coming to the lounge uh, before they depart in this case. Maybe have a meal, have a beverage, and then they can get on their way and get to their destination. So we uh, we really play, a, I think, an important role in the uh, in the ecosystem uh, in trying to provide uh, the traveler with a with a better journey and uh, a good start, I guess in this case, to their journey as they uh, as they as they go on their way. So, tell me what drove the decision to make DFW the first location, and what about that market made it the best place to start in the U.S. Uh, DFW uh, Dallas, obviously, very large airport in the United States. Um, and 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 we saw right away a good base of of potential customers for Plaza Premium, and we 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 see that through the analysis of our the various existing customer base uh, and partners that we have around the world. And Dallas being such a, a large airport with multiple terminals, uh, we saw that as a uh, as a good place to to come into. Of course, uh, Dallas um, has a significant, I'll say, home carrier. Uh, at that airport, but we are in in Concourse E or in Terminal E, which uh, houses, for the most part, um, a, you know, a series of carriers uh, that that certainly, in 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 many cases, uh, can make use of our of our lounge that we have there. So 
uh, Dallas was a, a good choice for us to start, and we're uh, we're proud to to be there um, for the last few years. What sort of amenities are most in demand since coming online in the U.S.? Yeah, that's interesting. I think um, you know, first, obviously, uh, I'll say the, the 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 comfort coziness of a lounge. People enjoy that. I mean, they want to have uh, choices in in terms of seating. You know, whether they want to work whether they want to have a bite to eat, uh, whether they just want to lounge around a nice chair or whatever the case may be. Uh, we, we offer that in our, in our facilities. Obviously there's other amenities that, you know, um, are not necessarily always provided at all airports. As an example, free Wi-Fi is something that we provide our customers. Obviously the whole food and beverage experience uh, is obviously something that, that is included, as I said before. And so, you know, a lot of people will show up and, you know, have a meal or have some sort of food or a beverage before they depart for their next flight. So that's something that's um, that we do uh, in some cases. And I'll take Orlando, which is the latest one that we opened. Uh, we also have shower facilities in the lounge. And so sometimes people may depart on a longer flight or later in the day or whatever the story may be where they may decide to to have a shower and refresh a little bit before they depart. So um, there, there's there's a range of, of of amenities that we provide that that is of uh, you know that is attractive for the customers that we serve. How has the lounge market evolved since the pandemic, and how have the needs of travelers evolved along with the role these lounges play within the airport environment? Yeah, you know the pandemic uh, certainly, uh, as unfortunate as it was, I think a lot of people became more aware of their surroundings and and being in crowds and what have you. And I think lounges provide a bit of that sanctuary, if you will, uh, for many. And so that that's something that we certainly have noticed. Um, you know, listen, the, the bottom line here is I think more and more passengers now um, want to have a, a better uh, airport experience. And, and, you know, if we can play a role in that, then then that's just wonderful. Um, the um, what we're seeing is an outcome of of the pandemic now that we're sort of the you know travel has returned uh, in a robust way certainly in the United States is uh, is 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 passengers are really looking for that uh, quality of service and um, we you know we're we're happy to 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 be where we are because that is exactly where we fit in and so it's been. Uh, it's been good to see that return of travel uh, in the last, say, year or so, uh, and and we're certainly, um, you know, we're we're, you know, our lounges are busy, uh, people are enjoying it. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing people leave the lounge with a smile on their face and they feel like they've had a good experience for the last little bit they were in there, and they can get on their way. So, can you tell listeners what PPG is bringing to the U.S. market through this expansion? And what are you looking to provide as a product that is unique to other amenities being offered today? Yeah, so obviously the the whole lounge experience, I mean, we just talked about. So that's something that's important. And the question that, you know, ultimately is, is where do we go next? So there's, there's different things on the horizon here, but, you know, we have other tools within our, 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 our portfolio that, that it, that's worth mentioning, um, which you know, we've really evolved from a lounge operator only to a hospitality company that offers a range of services that can be adapted for the market and the airport that we operate in. As an example, uh, we have a meet and assist service called Always. It always is available, for instance, at Dallas Fort Worth Airport. Uh, we also have it in Toronto and in Sao Paulo at Guadalupe Airport. And and it's basically, as 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 I just said, a meet and greet service where we can provide you know basically a seamless uh, transition for the for the users for the customers through a given airport. And so whether it's um, you know sometimes it could be a language barrier and people are intimidated by a large airport, or maybe there's tight connection, or maybe um, there's 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 multiple uh, terminals to go through and and um, and and people uh, prefer to be handled in a way that's very personalized, for instance, 
and and expedited through the various processes at an airport. Uh, that's what always is all about. I'll tell you the people that I know, um, you know, even anecdotally customer stories, uh, once they make use of the service, especially at larger airports and they realize how beneficial it is, I can't begin to tell you how people say, you know, next time I'm going to use it again because it takes out the stress and sort of the, the component of having to figure out by yourself where to go or what to do next. You basically have somebody by your side that knows the system and and way around the airport and gets you on your way uh, quickly. So that's a that's a really, really big perk uh, in this particular case. OK, so let's talk about technology. How is it evolving inside the lounges? What are we seeing as emerging demands for travelers going forward? Yeah, I think the travelers are looking. There's a couple of things. Um, and I mean, we've been seeing that for a number of years now, but people want to be more in control of their journey. They want to be able to do more things by themselves. They want to have tools at their disposal to make their journey, um, I'll say, uh, easier. And 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 technology obviously, obviously plays a role in that. Um, the company has invested a significant amount of, of capital in, in, in this over the last uh, few years. Uh, one of the things that we've uh, rolled out uh, is our smart traveler uh, uh, application, which basically um, is 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 an app that you can use where you, for instance, if you have uh, lounge passes that were acquired, can be stored in there. Um, you can also, uh, through the market, uh, through the app, uh, redeem uh, your your points that you earn after your visits at at, at given lounges. Um, uh, for a variety of, of services and goods uh, that's available, and so the th that's been that's been uh, really important. Uh, looking ahead, um, there's further technology improvements that we're looking at to help streamline people, for instance, as they come into our lounges. Um, you know, to reduce potentially uh, waiting as you come into the lounges or maybe through some of the offering that we can uh, promote, whether through our Smart Traveler app uh, or other tools that we're looking at in the future where we could um, really help um, uh, or use, I guess, uh, um, innovation and technology um, to help uh, make the journey better for the customer. Great. So what other locations are in the works for 2023 and what does expansion of PPG look like in the next three years? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, the U.S. is such a large market. Uh, we've been looking at at obviously expansion. As I said, Orlando is the latest uh, lounge that opened late last year. Uh, we have a number of sites um, uh, in the U.S. that we're looking at. Um, effectively, as I said before, we're going to be going where a uh, there's obviously demand for for the services, but also um look at what service we're going to have are we going to have a lounge are we going to have always are we going to have both uh could we roll out any other product that's within our portfolio suite of, of of services again that's something that that we're we're really focused on uh obviously lounge being i'll say the core business uh there are like i said number of airports that are high on our list to do and we do anticipate to have more lounges in the next two three years in the u.s in, in various cities. Um, smaller and bigger cities uh, are, are not off the table. It's really more a function for us of making sure that we uh, deploy um, our product in airports that have, I'll say, demand for it, and, and most of them do, but to have the right size demand, uh, the right facility, and the right terminal or concourse, depending on where we're talking about, uh, so that we can meet uh, the most you know, potential clients uh, in the in the right airport at the right time. Uh, so uh, lots is happening there and uh, stay tuned for more. There, there's definitely going to be some uh, some new locations opening up in the next few years. So expanding on that a little, what types of markets are you targeting in the U.S. for continued expansion? And what are you looking for in terms of airport and airline partners to expand further? Yeah, so um, obviously, you know, you expand. And so the first thing, as you said, is the airport. I think the airports are obviously our partners. Uh, you know, we want to be playing a role as, if you will, an extension of their of their uh, uh, customer experience uh, within their airports. And so 
Uh, we look at airports that are desirous to see the types of operations that we have. And for instance, lounges that we have um, uh, to, to, to bring along. We also look at the, the demographics and the mix of, of, of travelers at a given airport. Uh, there are some airports that have a, a much more a higher percentage, for instance, of leisure travelers, some have more business travelers. So that would also help us address, you know, what kind of service offering we would provide at a given uh, at a given airport. Uh, uh, we're also looking as an example at, at different um, uh, potential locations, maybe outside uh, the immediate United States, but within the Americas region where, uh, for instance, U.S. travelers may may spend a lot of time in. I mean, we were, we're in, as I said before, almost 40 countries around the world, uh, but there is a lot of destinations, you know, whether it's you know, obviously Canada, we have a fairly mature operation, but also Latin America, where we are uh, also looking to expand fairly quickly. And again, it's all about the power of the network. The more lounges we have and the more units we have in different uh, geographies or areas, that actually meets the demand of people, not only at their home airport, but often wherever they may go, um, you know, more more frequently. Uh, that actually is very important to us, um, creating that brand awareness so that people see us not just here, but also there type of thing. That's important to us. Well, Pascal, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a great conversation. Where can folks go to learn more information? Yeah, certainly uh, go to the Plaza uh, pr 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 Plaza Premium uh, uh, website for more information. Um, we're obviously uh, pleased to be here, and thank you for uh, for the opportunity to do to talk today. And um, uh, look forward to welcoming anyone listening, uh, whether in Dallas, Orlando, or somewhere else in the world. Uh, as we expand, um, we welcome uh, the opportunity to. Uh, to get to get travelers into our lounges around the world. Thanks again for listening to today's podcast. Stay up to date on industry news, current issues, and information specifically for airports, airport operations, FBOs, and airport-based business by subscribing to Airport Business Daily Newsletter. And as always, please continue to visit aviationpros.com.